Hi, and welcome to the Daily Recall Show. I'm Vasily, your host, and today I will talk to you about real problem-solving skills. So we will basically take the conceptual knowledge that I've explained in the past couple episodes and apply it to a very interesting problem of how, how would you write five books in five days, okay? So I picked up writing as an example of a problem because that's what many people are aware of, right? And I think that everybody in their life someday or someday in the future are wanted to write a book, okay? And the problem with writing a book is that you can either make it really, really small book, right? Like a couple pages long or like something like this book, okay? And um, you can write it quickly. But if you want to write a really good one, like the Leo Tolstoy guy did, a big book, then it takes a lot of time, right? So that's basically the, 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 the problem that we're going to be solving. How do you write a book of Leo Tolstoy size if it takes so much time to do that? So for him to write Anna Karenina, it took a couple decades, okay? And the way that most people, most writers solve this problem is by basically going for a compromise. So they kind of like settle somewhere in the middle and they say that, okay, I'm not Leo Tolstoy guy, right? So I cannot write for decades to produce something like 3 million characters, but my publisher is kind of okay with a couple hundred pages long book. So that's what I'm going to aim for. That's how most people solve this problem, okay? But the real problem solving skills suggest that the best way to approach this problem is to first start not from looking for a compromise by saying that, okay, um, I've got a couple months and then that, that's basically, that basically means that I'm going to write a 100 pages book or 200 pages book, but instead to intensify the contradictions. And what I mean by intensifying contradictions is to take these two variables, which is the size of the book, right? And the time that is needed to produce a book of this size and start kind of pulling them, tearing them apart a little bit, okay? So if we, if we, if we suggest that it basically takes, say, a couple months to write 100 pages book, then we can start by reducing the time dimension over there, okay? And we can say that, okay, what would it take to write a couple hundred pages book in, say, a month? or then we can make time even smaller and then say a week or a couple of days, okay? And then we have this another variable, which is the volume of the book. And a volume might be from something like a very tiny short book like this one, right? To something really big like the Leo Tolstoy book, right? So if we just go and increase the volume instead of trying to look for a compromise, we will get to something like this. So a question that we will end up solving would be, okay, how do you write a book of Anna Karenina size in no time, right? So that's when the contradictions are really, really intense. And the way, the, the reason why we're doing that is because intensifying contradictions always leads to asking the right questions, okay? And intensifying contradictions always leads to thinking the right thoughts. So let's just finish with this one part. Our, we intensify the contradictions and from the question of, let's say I'm going to write a book, right? How do I do that? We ended up to a bigger question, which is I think that most authors are really desperate for. They don't want to just create a book, right? Like a book of this size. They want to create a body of work their legacy, their end game, something like that. So we ended up to or transforming this original idea into something much more interesting, which is how do you create a body of work like 
the Julius Verne guy body of work of 70 books, right, in no time. How do you do that? So that's a much more interesting problem to solve. And the, the thing, the reason why I'm doing this is because if we, if we figure out how to solve this problem, right, then the problem of writing a single book is not going to be a problem anymore. Right, so it's very useful always to think through these bigger questions before jumping to a solution. Because if you just keep writing one book at a time, you're not going to be neither Julius, neither Leo Tolstoy as a result. Because these guys knew something different, and this is what I'm going to be talking about just in a couple of seconds. So, the first thing that we did, we intensified contradictions instead of asking how do I settle for writing a book of medium size and medium time? We went to something like, how do I create a body of work of many, many, many books in no time, okay? And the next, the next thinking model that we can apply to basically solve this problem is to start thinking, okay, if we picture a book as basically a vertical hierarchy of systems where a book is something in the middle, so let's say that when most people like imagine a book, right, are like this one, they have a mental screen popping up in their head. And in this mental screen somewhere in the middle, they see the book. And they see this, this book just as one mental screen. So it's present of the present, okay? But when a trained problem solve, a trained person in problem solving perceives a book, he basically sees this book as an hierarchy of systems. So on the lower level, it could be a chapter. That's basically what a book is comprised of, right? Um, and like this one, <laughs> for example. And even smaller, it could be a paragraph or a sentence and so on. So that's the system level below the book, right? And above the book, it could be a series, like the Talib guy wrote, the inserter series, right? Where there are a couple books that are originate about one topic. And then even beyond that, there is this Julius Verne guy who wrote 70 or 78 books that were kept publishing even after he was dead because he created like a whole category of work. It's not just one book, right? So his whole, his whole body of work is just enormous in size and volume. So that would be kind of the hierarchy of ideas, okay? So in the middle, we've got one book, below there is a chapter, there are, are a couple sentences, there is one sentence, and beyond or above there is two books, a series, and then a whole body of work with a Julius sitting on top of that, okay? And for each stage, for each layer here in the vertical hierarchy, we basically have our, a time dimension, okay? So if you think that, um, for example, here we've got the past and here we've got the future from this specific book okay so if we can start thinking what was this book like in the past right and then we can kind of duplicate those screens and go really 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 far to the past to understand what was this book and before before this book was originally published some time ago it was like a manuscript of the book right and before that it was basically a collection of chapters and before that it was a collection of ideas, right? And before that, it was probably like a very tiny idea or that the whole book emerged from, okay? But the coolest thing about this model is not the, 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 the layers. The coolest thing is that on each layer, there are different things that are happening in the past and in the future. So that's what, where I really want you to pay attention because this is the most important part in this whole video, okay? So for each layer of complexity of the idea, there are different things that are happening in the past and in the future, okay? And let's just come back to the original question. So the original question was basically, how do you write a book? And how do you write a book in a very short amount of time, okay? Because that's what everybody wants, right? <laughs> to write a book, to publish it, to, I don't know, for, for some reason. But the, the really interesting thing is that if you just kind of jump back in time here between the screens on the book level, or you can see that the way you write a book is by writing a book. 
And I don't know if that makes any sense, but basically this book was basically a collection of ideas, right? And before that, it was just one idea and so on. But if you jump to the or higher level, where it's not just one book, but it's a collection of books, right? There are a little bit different things that are happening in the past. And this is the most interesting part, because the Julius guy, the Julius Verne guy who wrote 70 novels about travelers and inventors and really interesting things that were happening in the 18th century or 19th century, he, the way he approached writing was completely different, okay? So the way he approached writing is that he developed a category instead of writing one book. And what I mean by that is that he basically took extensive notes anywhere he went. So when he died, he left after himself a collection of 20,000 notebooks, like this size, okay, 20,000 notebooks with ideas. And the coolest thing that he did are, and the way he solved this problem, and the way I think it's the better way to solve this problem is that he not just kind of started writing one book at a time, right? But he basically came up with a category of knowledge, a knowledge source. So if we just come back to our model here, so this is the Julius, and imagine that here there are his 78 books, right? On this upper level in the vertical hierarchy. And what was before that in time? So that's a very interesting question. And before that, it was not just one book. Okay, before that, it was a category of knowledge that he has come up with that basically enabled him to keep writing these volumes. And the reason this is so cool is because when you invent a category like Julius did, you don't have to write one book at a time. You basically invent a whole world. That's what Tolkien did, for example, right? Or you basically invent the characters you invent the stories, you invent their machines that they're using. And if, you, if you've if you read Julius Verne, which is I highly recommend, he's my favorite writer of all times, he's, his works are comprised of the kind of similar events, okay? So whenever you start developing this, I call it the tesseract of knowledge, or the source of infinite power from which or every single unit that you produce stems from. Whenever you start developing this tesseract of knowledge, writing is not actually a problem anymore, right? Writing a book is just a byproduct of your work. It's not the, the problem that you're solving in the first place. Okay, so just coming back to these two notions that we discussed. The first notion was that instead of thinking that, okay, I'm going to write a book, how do I do that? Start thinking about how to write a hundred books in no time, because that's, that, that is the right question. That, that basically the function behind the form, the form of one book is, is just, it's not what you want it as a result. A writer wants to leave the legacy, the, his body of work. So instead of thinking about writing one book, think about writing a hundred books at one time. And that question basically leads you to this hierarchy of knowledge, okay, where on the lowest level is just one sentence, one idea, and on the highest there is this Julius Verne guy who wrote 70 novels and who created this whole world. And if you solve this problem on their high level, okay, if you jump back in time and track what Julius did, he was not just thinking about chapters of the book and thinking about like different kind of sections and different stories or different characters from the book, like everybody else does in the world. He was thinking about the world that he's producing, the category, the tesseract of knowledge that he is making. And that is why he was able to do that, because there is no way you can produce such an enormous amount of words, of characters, of stories, if you pull them from different sources. So the way to do what Julius did is to start developing the category of knowledge, okay? And then basically you create multiple representations for the same ideas. So his, his world that he was describing, the world of travelers, of inventors, it's actually like these novels, despite being very different by their nature, because there are different elements to them, like storytelling style, narrative, and so on, 
they they share many things in common, you know, and that is the coolest part that people really enjoyed not just one book of his, but his writing style. And therefore, it was so easy for him to produce more novels because he took extensive notes. He then used these notes to develop his own category of knowledge here in the past, right? So here he was basically uh, not writing like a chapter or something. He was developing all these works at the same time by actually producing the, the knowledge that ended up being his tesseract and his infinite source of knowledge from which he basically derived all the ideas of his. So the way to write, as the title suggests, the way to write five books in five days and the way to write a book is actually by not going and writing the book, but by thinking instead of a category of knowledge that you can create and creating that category through learning, through developing notes, through developing ideas. And then once you do that, then writing a book is not a problem anymore because you will write not just one, you will write 20 or 30 or 50 or 100 of them once you've developed this task rock, this source of knowledge. And just, just to give you an example of how, how would you approach doing that, because this is where, where what the next question is, or, okay, this makes sense, but how do I do that? How do I identify a category? How do I start developing this? I think that it actually starts from within, okay? So once you start taking, once you start inputting those ideas of yours, you will start develop, you will start seeing that if you like did that with a sticky notes thing, you would see the, the packs climbing up, okay? And you will start noticing where your notes are, are becoming, where your packs of notes are becoming higher and higher and higher in volume. So that's where the category is stemming from, kind of, okay? And here you can think about this kind of like layers. So for example, you picked up an idea about or some fitness thing that you wanted to write about, some like fitness advice or something, okay? And then you can ask, Okay, just let's imagine that this fitness advice is just one page in a book because that's what it is probably in density, right? Or this fitness advice is just like a paragraph or one page. But then you can ask, okay, but what the chapter is about? And then you can see that this fitness advice is probably or belo probably belongs to a chapter about how do you like stay fit, for example, right? And then you can level up a little bit from there and then you can ask, okay, and what are other things on how do you stay fit or other advice on how do you stay fit? And then you can just co compress this even more and level up even more and then you can ask, okay, but what the book is about. So that's where really interesting stuff happens because if you're thinking that th this fitness advice is just like one page in a book, okay, and the chapter to which it belongs are is probably about fitness or how do you do a specific part of fitness, then a number of chapters is how do you stay fit? And then the book is how do you live a life where those things like fitness, nutrition are basically taken care of on autopilot. And that's how you arrive to this category thing by asking what's the principle behind this and what's the next level of knowledge? What's the next level in this hierarchy? And the coolest thing is that when you start from each, basically any, any step in this level, you can always level up. You can always ask this question, what's the next level behind this one? And once you do that, you will arrive to first understanding what the category of knowledge is about that you're going to produce. And second, you will start developing this category from the bottoms up by asking these questions like what the book is going to be about. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and take care.